What up, everybody? It's your boy, uh, Muhammad Anwar. As you can see, I changed the name of the channel due to certain reasons. Uh, I renamed it uh, Voice from Upstate. See, uh, I'm the one to the left uh, with the black shirt. Okay. The one in the red shirt, my stepfather. The one in the white shirt is my uh, stepbrother. And uh, the one to the right is the homegirl. Had a birthday party and I uh, went to a Chinese buffet. Huh? So I'm not even tripping about uh, showing my face more, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? It is what it is at this point. And um, sorry being MIA, I, I've been through uh, like an ordeal and uh, situations and uh, hardship um, this past couple months, particularly uh, the past two weeks. So um, if you guys are wondering, man, where has it been, right? So I apologize for that. But uh, I'm going to try my best to keep it going. Uh, well, I'm going to keep it going regardless, but um, try to keep it consistent uh, as much as I can, right? So... In a way, uh, everyone's probably wanting, well, what's up with that G-Love, man? <laughs> so let me tell you a story, and, uh, and particularly these past two weeks to where it's been a life-changing experience for me um, and stuff like that, a traumatic one, a very uh, emotional and, and a stressful for one. So let me start where it began. Um, so as you knew about me, um, I grew up as an Asian gang member in the, in the Empire area, um, consistent with three cliques within uh, in the entire area. Putting that in consideration, my lifestyle growing up, you know, these interviews and these shows, right? I have sympathy for uh, people like me, right? So I was incarcerated, um, did two terms um, as well. Pretty much, uh, let me, have two weeks ago to where I discovered this, you know, thing in uh, my 03, 04 drug and uh, gun case to where as I was 25 years old. So. As you know, I do interviews, uh, male and female, incarcerated, in, uh, particularly in the uh, state of California. So I requested one from um, this female who's incarcerated in California, um, and then she never had a chance to, and then uh, pretty much referred me to um, her friend, right? So she declined, her friend. And I was going to be like, okay, um, well, that's it then, you know, I wasn't going to pursue anything else, right? But um, we decided to go ahead and um, talk and uh, get to know each other, right? And um, uh, one thing led to another, um, you know, feelings start developed. Uh, and in my end, um, it, it became love in my end, right? Um, so on her end, uh, I don't know that. <laughs> Only uh, she would know that, right? So... I sent in the visiting form um, with these court documents so they will know uh, the criminal history in, detail, in full detail. I sent the whole thing so it won't be no confusion. And, um, they were pretty much um, tripping on some of these charges per se, right? And um, I was just, just like, wow, uh, why? These are pretty much uh, over... Geez, uh, what, 19 years ago, right? And I just charged both of my numbers uh, 13 years ago. And whereas the criteria to visit now is uh, even with felonies, you, you can still go visit that person. Um, considering you, you uh, meet the criteria of not being parole probation and uh, you discharge your number in, well, they say a year, but particularly they want three years and you're not... Uh, been convicted of um, like murder and uh, rape, sodomy, child molestation, and so on and so forth, right? Which, which none of those apply to me. Uh, mine is uh, pretty much a drug and a possession of a firearm. So I'm curious what, what they're really tripping on and what, why is it being refused uh, based upon that. So I'm looking at it. I'm reviewing it. Um, so as you know, we wind it back. I... Um, got sentenced to five years uh, for this 0304 case. I never appeared in court. My attorney didn't want me to appear in court. I was 25 years old. Um, my older sister was, asking, uh, was the acting guardian uh, in this case. So I'm looking at it. I'm seeing what, 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 what's the problem here, you know? I, I keep on looking at it. I, I review it. I investigate it. I look at every definition 
every code. So this is redacted, by the way, I'm sorry, it's redacted. So this is the same thing you can get on public records online to whereas I went to go get it myself and they gave me a redacted version, right? Um, so anyway, I'm looking at it and I'm seeing uh, stuff I've never seen before, even in prison, to whereas it just mentions the, the conviction, right? The charge and the sentence. And um, so the stricken part, stricken, stricken, uh, it was there, right? And I, I just, someone told me a crip, <laughs> but hey man, those are strikes. And I'm like, what, what, what do you mean? Uh, there must be an error to whereas uh, I don't have no prior strikes. I didn't even have a prior criminal record before this case. And uh, we just took it as that. And then when I got to the main line um, to get classified, right? They thought it had strikes, so I didn't give me 80%. And um, to where I had to um, pretty much uh, um, fix it with the courts. And then I got my halftime. But I'm looking at it, I'm looking, and then there's codes here, and, and there's stuff here that I never read, I never got my discovery for. This is 19 years after the fact. I'm seeing codes here of the, of the, of the things that said stricken on it, right? Which are strikes. I'm seeing 1203.073B, eight of them. So that means not eligible for uh, probation. So I don't look at the adult one. I, I look at the juvenile one. I look at the definition of juvenile one. And, and those right there are very, very violent uh, stuff, right? If you're not eligible for probation in juvenile courts. Uh, that's California Youth Authority uh, type stuff. And um, pretty much um, under the Welfare Institution Code uh, 707B of violent stuff like you know I mean stuff that is very very violent you know and there's eight of them <laughs> that's stricken right and I'm looking and then, then I'm reading it and reading it I'm looking at uh, stuff like felony set settlement conference hearing and I get it you know um, but five of them for uh, a drug and gun case uh, that that's interesting right and I'm looking at um, Amended, right? Amended is, it's been added, right? It's been added on by the DA, these uh, juvenile strikes, uh, enhancements. And then I see criminal protective order, firearm surrender. So that's um, witness protection against me. And then I'm looking at uh, a bail hold hearing to as I already bailed out <laughs> and he, um, the DA wants me back in jail because he's saying it's drug money. And I'm looking at ex parte hearing from the letter from Department of Corrections. I'm like, huh? <laughs> right? And, and the motion granted by the judge for, for the letter um, uh, by the commissioner of parole, right? So that means it's an emergency uh, hearing, emergency motion, to whereas there's not enough time. Um, for anything, uh, to where they're recommending a sentence, um, a proper sentence to for me, right, and things of that nature, and uh, pretty much a minute order date is wrong. So that right there would grant a judge to vacate a prior sentence that he already imposed. So I'm guessing this prior sentence that he already imposed, by the looks of it, was life in prison. Uh, that's what I'm guessing, right? So. And I think I'm accurate. I think I'm pretty much correct on that. So he, he pretty much um, sentenced me to everything, found me guilty on everything, um, including the enhancements. So with, 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 the, with the California Department of Corrections stepping in in the emergency hearing, he gave him the ability to vacate the life sentence, right, and, uh, and impose a five, which he wanted to do from begin with, to impose a five, but the DA kept uh, stepping in and... and you know, and uh, stopping uh, the sentence, the five-year sentence. And uh, with a DSL, one of them was with a DSL uh, sentencing uh, requirement to whereas he had to sentence me according to the DSL sentencing guidelines to whereas those charges, those enhancements, those eight enhancements, uh, which I believe that were gang enhancements, gang-related uh, things, right, um, so it was a life sentence, so he vacated it, 
uh, he was able to vacate it with that motion from the uh, Department of Corrections and issued a five and found me guilty and everything, including enhancements. And what he does next is a remarial motion, which is strike the strikes. He, he does a remarial on all eight of them, right, to strike it. And he does a 1385 PC, Penal Code 1385, which to seal the juvenile uh, gang allegations, um, gang banging, and uh, strike, uh, violent, violent strike enhancements, right? So when he does a 1385 um, PC penal code to uh, seal the juvenile strike gang allegations, so that means that it don't exist, right? It can't be used against me. Even you see it, act like you don't see it. And if one pretty much wants me to prove it don't exist or wants me to tell them what the charges are, that's pretty much against the law because uh, Penal Code 11125 states that no individual agency should ask an individual to furnish a copy and prove an arrest exists or doesn't exist. So that right there is uh, against, you know, the law. It shouldn't even be, if you see something like that, it's been sealed. Um, it don't exist. It's all, scratch that. Act like you don't see it, even if you see it. That's how it works. When, it is, when the, the judge orders it, it's sealed, or when you get it sealed yourself. This is not a expungement. This is sealed. It's, it's, you know, it's higher than an expungement, you know? Um, so, let me be to 1994, too, so you understand what this is about. 1994, 17 years old. Um, in the Corona, California. I uh, got picked up by the homies, uh, 3G rides, right? Uh, heaters on the car I was in, in the back seat. I don't know about the other ones, <laughs> but uh, probably so, right? You had to guess at it. So all juveniles, um, so the homies, a couple of the homies, I don't know how many, were under investigation for uh, gang-related uh, uh, gang related violent actions, right? If you will. So I have to be careful with my words. Um, and got charged and convicted and got stricken out, right? And doing life right now for those uh, convictions. So I got arrested. We all got arrested. They kept them, convicted them eventually. And one was booked and released besides them, right? To the guardians, including me. Um, so the gang unit did come, right? We were did get interrogated. The gang, the gang, uh, what investigator or whoever expert, whoever it might be, um, the Asian gang expert, <laughs> uh, might be, came and um, gave us high C, had a chit chat with us, and uh, talk about our homeboys in the other city, in other cities, because we got uh, three different cliques in three different cities of the IE in the Empire. Um, so. You know, gave a high C and talked about our homeboys uh, in the different city and uh, how he had uh, encounters with them and stuff like that, right? So, um, pretty much we were all booked and released from there, besides those few individuals, um, to our guardians. And we all went our merry way and uh, didn't have no paper paperwork, didn't have no probation or nothing, right? So, this comes into that factor. 25 years old, right? Still a juvenile, once I reach 26, all over it. No chance for the DA, right, to um, bring that up, you know. So this is two cases in one, right, to whereas I was never convicted of it, um, that he brought up these eight gang allegations, um, gang activity, uh, enhancements, strikeable enhancements according to uh, juvenile uh, courts and the Welfare Institutional Code 707B, but in juvenile courts, there's no such thing as strikes, right? There's no such thing as life uh, in California Youth Authority and, and whatnot, right? So, but when you transfer it to adult court, right? <laughs> when you transfer it to adult court, it becomes strikeable offenses in adult court, right? So, um, so I, I believe personally is a violation of civil rights, right? Uh, right now it is according to the new law that's been passed, new bills and stuff. 
Um, but, you know, violation of due process, right? To where putting two cases in one, right? To where this was a trial by judge, by the way. My attorney just waved, 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 waved everything and was trying to rush, rush the situation to where uh, he didn't want to give the DA time to uh, do anything, pretty much, right? Because he knew the DA had no evidence to begin with. He's just, you know, but it was, if it went to trial by jury, he, uh, he, has, a, he has a good shot because, uh, you know, demonizing the person, you know, the person's a gang member, the person's in the gang files, he's documented as the gang member um, of that gang, and being arrested on that occur on that occasion on a gang sweep so as you know you watch the movie colors right if a couple of crips or whatnot uh, whoever they might be blood serenos whoever a couple of the their homeboys is under investigation for uh, let's say homicides right they get a warrant they get enough evidence for a warrant on those individuals right they do a gang sweep right it's like a mini Rico, but not really a Rico. They do a gang sweep, right? And they arrest, they wait for the day, right? To where they can arrest as many as possible, right? And it don't even matter if it's different locations. So you see the movie Colors, right? They arrest individuals from that particular gang at different locations, right? Round up as many as they can, and that arrest has to be, has to state what, why are they arrested, what are they arrested for when you get booked, right? So it's going to be the ch same charges, even though he had the different location, because you're f from that gang. Same, not same, not same charges, but it's going to put the arrest is for homicide, put it that way, right? So that's where, uh, in my situation, came in. The arrest shows is for gang-related uh, violent activity, right, that were, that I got arrested for, just simply guilty by association, simply, um, simply because I was from uh, that gang, to whereas I wasn't even under investigation, uh, simply uh, guilty by association, put it that way. So, now, I was in um, pretty much, uh, so my lawyer had my older sister that was being the guardian since his uh, juvenile court proceedings in the adult court, right? Um, so my lawyer told my sister, he doesn't want me in court, take me to a halfway house, right, a sober living home for three, four months until sentencing. So anyhow, she comes to visit me one day. So this is not court order. One day and she tells me, she slips, right? She tells me, um, yeah, it, it, you know, the attorney don't want you to know, but uh, it's a three strikes life sentence case. I'm like, what? I'm like, I ain't got no strikes, man. That's a damn joke, right? So I'm like, man, this, this is a damn joke, you know? I, I don't believe it. There's, there's nothing to believe. It's a joke, right? To where it is a joke. And 19 years after the fact, right, um, here you have it. It's not a joke, you know? And... When I got out of prison, I they didn't want me around, right? Uh, they didn't want no part of me, uh, and um, pretty much told me I got to take out, of, take off out of state to um, go live with my mom, which was a blessing in disguise because um, that's where I gained my construction experience, and uh, that's what I do for a living right now today, you know, here in California because uh, I moved back to California around I'm gonna say three years ago um, as a contractor. So, I, I, I realized this, right? Uh, I questioned her about it. I go to her house and, and I asked her, uh, do, do you remember uh, when you told me? And, and the phone keeps ringing, right? Her phone. And, and, and besides talking to me, she, she goes in the house and answers the phone by right, her cell phone, not even in front of my face. <laughs> uh, so, and two phone calls, right? I asked her, do you remember? She said, I don't, I don't remember. I don't. <laughs> I'm like, okay, so you don't remember. You told me that my attorney told you he didn't want me to know, but he, <laughs> but he had to tell you because you were my guardian. And so he told you 
that it was a life sentence, three stripes case, and you told me the headlight. And I'm not exaggerating. These eight um, juvenile gang enhancement stripes, right? These eight of them, right? She told me there were like 50 to 100 charges. I was like, that's why I thought it was a joke. So I'm like, 50 to 100 charges? Wow. You know me? I'm for drugs and guns? I'm like, no. <laughs> there must be some type of joke, some type of error there in the life. Three strikes case? Oh, get out of here. <laughs> so, but 19 years later, um, it, it, it's the truth. It's no joke. It's no lie. So, so the law, so the laws now is, is against the Constitution, a uh, violation of civil rights. Back then, uh, I, I believe it was too, but the thing is about it was, the thing about it is I, I believe the DA was, um, um, by, by law, he could use it, you know. <laughs> he found a loophole uh, and, and, and he had a direct foul, uh, so he was able to use it. Um, by law, so even though I wasn't convicted, right, I didn't go to court for it, didn't see probation or nothing, right, didn't even get charged for it, but to, but I got arrested for it. So it's called adjudication or something like that, right, to where as adjudication, adjudication, I'm sorry, it could mean an arrest for it. It could mean that. And then one of the other criteria is if you're a ward of the court, Meaning if you're a probation or, or you're like a juvenile delinquent, you're always skipping school and all that, right? Um, so, so my mom was on welfare. So that's considered a ward of the court. To whereas the court, right, has, you know, has um, pretty much a percentage of custody over you, right? You know what I mean? We on probation, or your mom's on welfare, or uh, things of that nature. I could be wrong about the welfare thing, but if you find a loophole, you you can you can justify that as, as a ward of the court, right? So an identification could just mean an arrest, you know. So that's how he was able to pull it off, and uh, so so my sister denied it, and then uh, I was like, you know what? Um, if you don't remember it, I remember it for you, dude. You know. And uh, I'll take a lie detector right now. I'm not crazy. I'll take a drug test right now. You know, I got to the point to where I was, you know, had a lot of soul searching. And then uh, pretty much that right there um, was a life changing uh, experience for me to know that. And to know that they keep it hidden, hidden from me, my family, right? Uh, kind of like suspect, right? Uh, so I can bring up like a couple of factors why, right? Maybe they thought I really did it. They didn't want me around, right? Who knows, right? And, and I'm some some type of monster or something like right right there or something, right? Or or, or or they got paid, you know, to get rid of me and for me not to know, right? So I don't I don't know. I I can only speculate at it, but all I know is um to or maybe they're scared, right? Maybe you know someone contacted them and, and tell them, you know. You know, don't say this, don't say you remember, don't say that. Who knows, right? Only I can speculate. Only they know, you know. But you're denying it and you're shooken up from it and you're nervous and scary looking and the phone keeps ringing. I even said, is that law enforcement? <laughs> right? Uh, she denied it, right? Anyhow, that's, um, that's a story. It started with um, me, um, one is see um, a incarcerated female that... Uh, I fell in love with and uh, pretty much applied for the vision form and uh, sent those in. <laughs> and uh, wow, what a what's life-changing, revealing situation. And um, pretty much requesting um, the facility. I'm not going to mention the name uh, and no one that works in there. Um, and even the female that I uh, grew feeling for and fell in love with. Um, I am requesting um pretty much I am requesting to go ahead and approve that and um do the right thing by the law. I fit the criteria as of now for an approval. You go by what's considered an approval and what's considered a disapproval. I can fit the criteria of an approval. So I'm requesting 
if anyone's listening, has authority, pretty much, to get it approved, I'm requesting an approval based upon I fit the criteria. And the brother that you're going to hear next in the interview, sorry I talked too much, took a lot of time, but I want to explain everything. So the brother coming up on the interview, um, converted Islam, so pretty much enjoy listening to him and kids, uh, troubled youth and whatnot. You heard my story, right? <laughs> Guilty by association, you know? Guilty by association. Remember that. You don't even have to be there. You don't even have to do it. I know the law's changed now, but there are police officers and law enforcement and, and whoever else, right, that has authority within the law um, that are not, let's say they're crooked, um, that will do that. Right, they will do that. They will arrest you, and maybe even charge you and, and, and try and, and get a conviction based upon your guilty by association. Based upon a couple of your friends were under investigation from that group, from the same group you claim, same neighborhood you from, and now you're spending the rest of your life in prison. You know. So with that being said, um, I thank the judge. I'm not gonna miss name to judge for. To, for fighting the DA and, and for the interest of justice, you know, that he, that he proclaimed using a Romero motion in 1385 for the instant justice. And for fighting so hard for me, I thank, I thank the judge. And I thank my attorney, I'm not going to mention his name too, you know who you are. I thank you. I thank you for fighting real hard and, and rushing the case and, and, and just hanging uh, it to the, to the judge, you know. Um, I thank both of you guys for saving my life, and that's it. <laughs> and uh, you need you need any questions for me? You want any questions for me? Anyone? Anyone in uh, the watch the show? Go ahead and comment. You want to contact me directly? That's fine too. You know. And for the trouble youth and whatnot, you know, you have a mentor here. This is what I'm for. You know, and you have to mentor with the brother coming up coming up next uh, that you're listening to and, and everyone else in the show and anyone else that's not in the show, okay? And you guys enjoy the interview and uh, thank you so much and you guys have a great day, okay? You have a prepaid call from Orlando Ochoa, an inmate at California Substance Abuse Treatment Facility and State Prison at Corcoran in Corcoran, California. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. To accept this call, say or dial 5 now. Thank you for using... Oh, yeah. Okay, well, uh, yeah, hi, my name is Orlando uh, Marco Ochoa. I've been down for, going, it's going to be uh, 17 years. I've been down since 2006. Um, I found this platform uh, from a friend of mine in here, and uh, I've been talking to the uh, top for a while, and you know he explained to me the the, the goal that he has in, in mind, and, and to sit here and um, try to help you get people to to know what's what what our, our lifestyle is and um, how we're changing to 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 do that. So I want to be able to uh, help you help, you know, men, women to to understand, so they can understand that they're not alone, that what they're going through right now, we're all going through. Um, it's, it's not easy out there, and I, I understand that, but uh, uh, there's people that that are interested in, in, in their life and in their stories, so um, that, that's, that's something I want. I would like to be uh, someone that they can write. Um, talk to, uh, email with. So, uh, this is a mother not alone. I'm also looking for, uh, some pen pals, uh, male, female. It don't matter. Um, uh, if I can get uh, financial assistance, legal assistance, that's, that's a bonus. Um, but really, uh, I, I really want it. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. That are, that are going through it and, and to let them know that, that, like I said, they're not alone. Okay, uh, what's your nationality? Uh, my nationality is uh, Mexican. Okay, where are you from out here in the streets, bro? 
Okay. Um, yeah, so that's that's what that's what got that's what got me into gangs. Okay. Um what, what are you incarcerated for and how long your sentence? Um where at or why am I? Oh what what are you incarcerated for and how long is your sentence? And I I'm I'm incarcerated. Um well the original case that I came that I came in right in, in, in two thousand six was for a robbery. Um, six months into the case, uh, they, uh, they pulled me back down, they pulled me back down to, uh, uh, to the LA County and, uh, uh, questioned me about, well, they tried, they questioned me first before they brought me down to, to LA County and, uh, they, uh, they, they brought me down from, from, um, San Bernardino to LA to question me and then, uh, six months into the case, they, they brought me back. Uh, down to, to LA County and, and officially charged me for, uh, at first it was a capital murder and 18 charges of robbery. Um, but I fought my case for about two and a half years and, um, I was able to, to, to come out with a deal of 32 years. It was, uh, it was, it was 11 doubled up. Um, with no, yeah, it was like it was eleven doubled up um, because of my prior history, and then five, uh, five, one doubled up five times for uh, the robbery. So yeah, I ended up at the time just because of my prior conviction. Okay, uh, how long have you? Uh, Go ahead. Uh, how long have I been down? I've been down, uh, going on 17 years right now. Uh, uh, I got back here, uh, January 2nd, uh, 2006. Okay. Are you, are you going through any appeals or anything right now? Um, no, uh, I'm right now down out of town. Um, there's a resentment unit, uh, that, that the DA, uh, Gaston has put through the resentencing, um, uh, for the interest of justice, uh, uh, to uh, drop people times because uh, the 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 charging the the, the charging factors in, in people's cases is excessive. Like it, it's it's extremely not an answer to justice. It's just a, a lot of people up. So he wanted to make sure that you know, yeah, people did time, but they got a chance to actually uh, uh, start over again and have a second um have a second chance. So okay. yeah, uh, I wrote in and you know I, I might be able to to. Have action to get it out or something like that. Uh, soon, then later, uh, okay. uh, I gotta give. I gotta have some pain time though. Okay. Well, putting that in consideration, uh, can you briefly uh, go ahead and elaborate uh, without incriminating yourself about the day you caught the case uh, and you know the events that occurred and pretty yeah. much how they uh, eventually apprehended yeah, yeah, you? Uh, yeah. yeah uh, uh, I was out there. I was out there in the mix with the gang. Uh, um, I was for my first case uh, for a, a home invasion and robbery uh, when I was uh, 14. I went to YOP and got out when I was 18. I was in Tehachapi, uh, uh, YOP program. I got out when I was 18. And in the time, I, I met some people that were there. Three way call. I was I was. I was right there with some people that uh, were affiliated with with uh, 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 with uh, the Muslim Mafia, and um, yeah, so I I I took place with them out there, and um, I was just out there running the mess with them. Um, this call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. Uh, you know, uh, extortion, uh, pretty much anything you think of. Uh, and uh, what happened was is, uh, the person that I murdered, um, she was from a rival, uh, a rival gang. The the big homie that I was that I was looking for, uh, his his um his uncle was was uh no like the the person the person that that I was looking for his his other what would they call them or not because. You know, their their brothers in the Mexican mafia. But his rival sent his nephew to come talk to me about paying taxes because they were trying to take over the area. I'm 19 at the time. The dude 
uh, 18 himself, and um, you know, he went about the wrong way talking about that he was going to uh, 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 murder me. So, you know, I went to my big homie and was like, hey man, this is going on, this is this and that, you know, someone's trying to, uh, uh, trying to take money out your mouth. So he was like, well, I, you know, give it a week or two and, and we're going to work it all out. Well, within that week or two, uh, my, uh, my, my, my whole boy, uh, got killed. Um, they thought it was, they thought it was doing it. So, you know, in retaliation, I, I sat there and, um, went against the, the, the command to stand down and do the weeks, and I ended up signing the dude. He didn't technically kill him, but, uh, yeah, uh, 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 they were writing and and tagging inside of a, and, uh, 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 inside of an alley, and I was walking up the plan, and a uh, fight broke out, and I ended up strapping them to death and killing them, and, um, yeah, that's what happened, you know, I ended up killing them over, over, you know, hothead. You know, being stupid, not following orders, and you know, none of this really came out in the paperwork except for you know that you know I broke out and I was killing them because I took a deal. I took you know, I pleaded guilty to to the robbery and everything because I didn't want a lot of stuff to come out because it could have been worse. It could have been worse if if shit that came out like it looked like a recall act, it looked like a lot of other stuff. So I just sat here and and, and, and confessed like yeah, yeah, I, I did it. Um, I, I feel moment I spoke out with you real thing. So at the end of the day, um, yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, I went to, after that, um, I got, I got busted for something, um, for violation, and in 2005 I got stabbed, um, over, over the murder, over the murder, and, um, I was doing no good. Uh, yeah, and, and so I went out to LA, I ended up moving out to um to San Bernardino and kept up the same things, keeping in with the circles, just a whole different circle. And um, I was also doing robberies, uh, uh you know, probably thinking doing dumb stuff. And uh, at the end of the day I got busted for a robbery that wasn't even mine. It was my own boys, but I was still active at the time. I was uh, still paying active even though I was being and um I got busted. I got busted, and at the end of the day, uh, I got I got sent to San Bernardino County. I got stopped again, and I said, Nah, I'm good. Like I'm I'm not gonna go. You know, that was I was told that all I needed to do is that that the that the ride was gonna be rough, and but as long as I said as long as I stayed strong, that um uh, that I was gonna be good. That I was gonna be uh, uh I wasn't like. Okay, um, they told me that as long as I stay strong and don't keep you up, uh, lock up, and, and you know, fight the fight, like, go through, take my listings and everything, that, that I'll be good. But I just got stabbed again, and it was like, okay, well, you know, what am I supposed to do? I got paid, I got, uh, uh, you know, at the time I was, I was engaged, and you know, I have a family, my mom was alive, and you know, I was like, what, what am I supposed to do? Mm. So I just chopped it up, decided to go, to, decided to lock up and go SMR. Okay, SMI well. is, is, huh. is, what? Yeah. Did, did you go ahead? You want me to elaborate what SMI is? Uh, no, nah, because they already know, bro. <laughs> yeah, they already know, bro. So, they, uh, everyone that watches, they already know. Oh, that uh, people come on, they're, they're, they're most likely that, uh, in, you know, in S and Y anyway. Uh, so, I, uh, see, we got like five minutes left for this call. So, go ahead and like wrap it up, bro. Like, go ahead and like, um, pretty much like, uh, say, say we have, uh, you know, your final words, right? And, uh, whatever you want to address, uh, to people or whatever story. And, um, you know, like when it has two minutes left, right? When the operator comes on and says you got two minutes rem remaining, um, you can go ahead and give a shout out to, uh, you know, family and friends or uh, people out here, you know? So you got five, like yeah, yeah. five minutes left. Um, yeah, so well, what I would say to, to the kids out there and just man, women, and people out there that, that have lived, you know, in, in the lifestyle growing up and uh, 
in the ghettos and the hoods. Like, I know, I know it's a struggle. It's a struggle to be out there and not have the things that you want. But things like this happen when you get caught up. You know, you're, you're making money. You're doing, you know, drugs. You're feeling good. But at the end of the day, it's like you make wrong decisions when you're on those drugs. Like, I probably wouldn't have been so quick to steal a boy if, if I wasn't on drugs. But... You know, I'm team now. I, I'm trying to. I'm trying to change my life. I want to sit here and do better. You know, it's not easy. I still have problems in here. But at the end of the day, I want you guys to know that you guys are not alone. I, I, you know, I can understand where you guys are coming from. You know, if you if you would like to to reach out, talk to me, let me know what's going on with your life, man. I'm here. I want to. I want to take interest into you to to what you're going through because I want to do the same thing and I could probably help you out. Um, as far as plant out, like I said, women and males, if you guys want to holler, holler at me, um, like I said, financial aid, you know, could, uh, that'd be a help, uh, legal assistance, that, that's, that's a help too, um, yeah, just, there's a better life, there's a better life for you people are in. This call and your telephone number will be monitored and recorded. You guys, you guys are worth more than, than, than uh, uh, being another number to, to, a, to a big uh, machine that, that is full of lies. So just remember that you're worth something, that you got some talent that you may not know of, and you just got to, you know, unlock it, and you're, you're worth more. Yeah, uh, my name is, again, uh, Orlando Ochoa. Um, you could, you could look me up, or you could hit me up on getting out dot, uh, getting out dot com, um, another person that has tablets. Uh, you could hit me up on there, you just gotta, uh, sign up for my, uh, CDC number in, and, uh, wait till you get a message, or whatever, or you could write me. Um, I'm at Saturday at Portland right now. Uh, yeah, you could, uh, just wake me up, and I'll ride, I'll call, whatever. Okay, you, you want to give a shout-out to, um, any, anyone out here? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I want, I want to say what, you know, I want to give a shout-out to those who are, who are in the struggle. You know, you'll get over it, you'll overcome it, you'll start leaving yourself, stay forward. And believe in yourself, you're not alone. Uh, you can get over it.